Hi. So, since this is a travel video, I should start with the essential information for those who also might be interested to to have a personal look um, where you can stay over with a van or with other camping equipment in Kosovo. So this is Hotel Gracanica in Gracanica and Gracanica is a little bit south of Pristina, the capital of Kosovo. And as you can see, this is a very nice hotel with amenities for camper vans. It's simply great. You can park there, it's safe. The staff of the hotel is very friendly. It's very affordable. You have a great place outdoors. You have from breakfast to lunch and dinner everything there you can use shower facilities if you need to and you can take it as a little base for everything when you're exploring Gracchanica such as you see it here or the surroundings order a taxi and within a few minutes you are in the very busy and very crowded center of Pristina you don't have to worry about finding a parking space for your camper van or being concerned about the safety of your camper van. So it's a great place to recommend. This is a place with countless memories for me. Almost none of them have a place in this little travel video. Let me give you some geographical context just so that you know where I am here. It's somewhat, although not completely geographically correct to say, you're in the center of Kosovo with Pristina, the capital of Kosovo, uh, being at the horizon as you can see it here. You can overlook the central plains of Kosovo, you see the skyline of Pristina and you see the power plant of Obilich, the energy facility providing energy to Kosovo. You can see in the distance the surrounding mountains which are encirculating Kosovo to the west, to the east, to the south. And you don't see those necessarily to the north because it's too far away. And Gracchanica and some smaller villages belonging to the same little neighborhood, such as Chaglavica and others, are what is known as ethnic enclaves close to the capital of Kosovo, Pristina. But these days, Pristina has grown so incredibly that there is no physical distance between the boundary of Pristina and the administrative boundary, the city boundary of Gracchanica any longer. You literally pass through and from one house to the next you're all of a sudden in Gracchanica, which used to have a majority Kosovo Albanian part and a majority Kosovo Serbian part. Gracchanica is also hosting one of several famous Orthodox monasteries in Kosovo and it is a place where I lived for almost three years. I lived at several places in Pristina and in Gracchanica and I loved to live in Gracchanica. What I loved most about Gracchanica was that I had the opportunity to live in an entirely rural environment and that I had a little bit of time when I was able to get some rest where I could live in relative peace. I left this place finally in 2004 and when I'm comparing what I'm seeing right now the situation is so starkly different. So let me try to explain a little bit. Hotel Gracchanica is located on a side road 
and there are several possibilities just simply to follow this road and to hit the main road that is passing through from Pristina through Gracchanica um, and then it will continue through the landscape heading towards Chilan. And there are still some of these traditional old roads where you then also see uh, the typical structure of buildings as they are common in rural neighborhoods and in the case of Gracchanica specifically as they are very typical for rural ethnic Serbian neighborhoods. It's the type of the buildings and how they look like where you can identify where you are. But once you're hitting the main road, uh, passing through Gracchanica, you will also be faced with an enormous noise of passing vehicles and many of them are really heavy trucks and they follow the road through Gracchanica and give you no space for silence any longer, which always was the case in, in Gracchanica, but uh, this noise level and the intensity of the traffic has drastically increased and then in the middle of Gracchanica, you hit the monastery. And of course, I couldn't take many pictures or videos of this beautiful, beautiful monastery and the inside of this compound, because it's, it's a way of respecting also the culture and also inside the monastery, um, there is no permission to take photos or videos. So this is just a small glimpse with regard to how the monastery and the compound uh, on which the monastery is located are looking like. And again, I have many memories uh, of this monastery and also the reasons why I also often had to come here. Abandoned buildings in Rajanica, in the old Serbian area. Let's see whether I see the house of my landlord. Everything here in this part of Gracchanica is looking so lost. It's different when I was here. And here it is. Here I lived two and a half years.
This is the property of Ferrada and Branca, or it was, I don't know. And I loved living here. Branca had rented out most of their house in the beginning to three German female police officers. And they were living in a tiny little part, a back part of the house because the rent that we internationals were able to pay were giving them an opportunity to survive because this is a Serbian, an ethnic Serbian enclave in Kosovo and there's so much to say about that but this is very much like it was and well maintained when I came back to Kosovo for my second time in 2002, I knew I wanted to live here. So I rented that and I stayed here between 2002 and summer 2004. It has very much changed, so to speak, increased, drastically increased is the traffic. Because this is the old road that essentially connects Pristina with Gilan. All the heavy traffic between Gilan and Pristina and Pristina and Gilan just goes through this area which is getting more and more dusty, noisy and impoverished. And I mean no disrespect to anybody, it's with the highest respect to everyone that I say these things. There's a lot of history that I'm just omitting. But when the war was over in 1999 in Kosovo and as a consequence of a so-called military technical agreement, all Serb military and police had to leave Kosovo. There were population areas with majority Kosovo Albanian and with majority Kosovo Serbian parts like still today Mitrovica North is predominantly Kosovo Serbian and Mitrovica North is uh, South is Kosovo Albanian uh, majority area and then there were the smaller areas with a predominantly Kosovo ethnic Serb population small villages which we then witnessed becoming enclaves um, with very complicated developments because before the war there was oppression of the Kosovo Albanian population by what I would abbreviate as the regime of Milosevic and after the war there was a lot of hatred, victory and very bad feelings between those who felt that they had won and the remaining Kosovo Serbs in these small areas such as Kracanica and the Kosovo Serb minority areas in those enclaves became isolated. The consequence of that and the overall development more and more impoverished. I'm staying out of politics here. Um, I'm just recalling what I already witnessed at that point in time and I saw a lot of economic development in other parts of Kosovo but with regard to those enclaves such as Kracanica that train largely went by but I could also see economic development coming from Pristina with new buildings, new enterprises, new hotels, new settlements moving towards this part of Kracanica. And that was a process that began and lasted years and now, many years later, I see where this process is right now. I'm putting this on YouTube. And so there is no space for any political statement or any statement that would create hard feelings. That's the opposite of that. 
what I stand for. I'm st always in my work I was for working on integration. It's just an observation with regard to what I can see because I have witnessed all the development in the Balkans since now more than 22 years. And here in this little town there are individual people who after the conflict were losers and maybe and I'm sure people like my landlord for example they were not winners before the war either they were no bad people at all they are truly my landlords Rade and Pranka here in Gacchanitsa and also my landlords in Pristina where I had another apartment they are really truly good people simple Kosovo Albanians and simple Kosovo Serbs but in Gracchanica life has gotten very poor there are other parts at the beginning closer to Pristina where life is thriving like at that place where I stepped over with Tiga because literally this place is 10 minutes walking from here in away and it's a tiny little paradise and I don't want to sound like ending on a somber or sober or a sad note this is life development and this is also of course this is a travel video um, but it's not only to show all the beautiful places that I have also videographed um, over the last days. This is life. Um, and life has many, many different aspects, facets, colors, developments over time. So, I th whatever the sound quality of those videos that I just took. Um, bear with me I did that deliberately because this noise is overwhelming and here it's a little bit calmer this is a tiny little river and in that restaurant over there I sat on uncounted occasions and some of my memories are related to this place for very specific reasons that have nothing to do with this video but it was hardly recognizable for me when I was walking by on my way to the monastery and to my former landlord's place. Only when I was paying attention, I could see the old structures behind new structures. That's my last comment and these are my last thoughts for tonight. This is life, right? that things change, all composite things are impermanent um, and there's a universe of things that I could contribute to why that is so and there would also be judgments whenever you're asking somebody about his or her opinion about developments here you would hear different opinions what I see are the individual people finding themselves in life circumstances whether in a ethnic enclave with Kosovo Serbs here or the other way around because this is not only true here it's a joint experience when conflict and war have led to very hard emotional feelings or oh, emotional feelings is a double word to hard emotions when things move away from peace and security to conflict and war at the end of the day there are before and after people who are losers and I feel if you know these people it's very different compared to reading about things in history books or in academic papers if you have lived in these areas and you know people 
you take part in their personal fate, their experiences and their circumstances of life, which always makes things inevitably also beset with emotional statements. That's the tragic of development when things all of a sudden cannot be solved with agreements or with jointness any longer.